I asked the owners when I had the house under contract, can you tell me where your septic system is? We don't know if we really have one. Just like Eric said, they lived there for 11 years. They did not know that they had a septic system. I kindly asked them where they thought their poop was going. They're like, well, we've never had any problems with it. And that's everybody's answer around the lake is, oh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I kept hearing from everyone. If I'm going to have guests in this house and VRBO it and have my own friends and family in this house, I don't want the sewage to get all backed up because the septic isn't working. And not to mention, I'm right on the water and I did not want that going into the water. So I did an inspection. They couldn't find it because there was no riser that came out of the ground where you cleaned out the tank. We couldn't find it anywhere. There was nothing indicated. Usually you can look for the green spot of the grass. Everything was green because we're on the water. So there wasn't anything differentiating where a, a leaching field would be. So I had a inspector come out with a hydrostatic camera, just like you would do if you were doing cast iron plumbing. And they went down the clean out underneath the house down to the first level and they put a camera through there to try to find where that was. And I have, so this is the guy that put the camera in. And then he takes this little machine that goes around looking for the wand of the camera, where it went. And he told me that he could see the wand going in the camera, going down the pipe. And it was immediately in water before it ever hit the tank. So that was not a good sign. And the, the sellers kept saying, well, it's it, we've never had any problems. We haven't had any backed up. Well, it's first of all, the pipe's coming down 20 feet. So they have 20 feet that water could back up before anyone ever noticed it. It might not, that's not working at all, but it just obviously wasn't draining properly. So I tried to negotiate. I talked to several people and because of where I'm at, this is an aerobic system. That's a new code that when you're this close to the water, it has to be an aerobic system. And if you can't have a place for the distribution field to be further than 75 feet away from the water, then you have to have a drip system and not a spray system. The spray comes out like a sprinkler system and sprays close to the water. It has to be underground, which kind of makes no sense to me because it still leaks. It still drips underground to the water. You can hear it beeping. So he thinks he finds where the wand is with this radar thing that he has. This is an old side storage shed that they had. And because the house was lifted, Underneath that storage shed is the old AC concrete pad, but they had to lift the AC off the ground 15 feet too. So they left this pad there. And wouldn't you know that the, somebody, either these owners or the previous owners, put the big concrete pad right on top of the septic system. So that, that orange X marks the spot is where we think it is. So fast forward, I get a septic company. I negotiated with the seller. They would only pay half of it. They gave me a contribution to closing costs. The whole entire thing ended up being $15,700. Now that I see how much work that is, I'm absolutely in shock that it could be done for that, that amount of money. So now we start the process. It took four months because of rain, supply chain issues to get this done. So the first thing they do is they have to try to dig where that X was to see if they can find the old tank. And this hole that you can kind of see there is the lid that they found with an excavator. And so that they found the old tank, first thing that happens. They need to start digging for a new tank and they don't want to dig where the old tank is because they haven't pumped it yet. It was underneath the pad of Stop concrete. It. We still have no earthly idea where the distribution field was, if there even was one. I did, an, I did an open records request with the county. You can, you can submit an open records re request to get the records, even if you're not the owner, on, on anything that had permits done on it. Well, I wanted to see the permits done on this. And they're like, oh, we, we found nothing for this house. Well, it was built in 1970. She's like, this house must have been built, been built in the 80s before we, before we had permits. I said, no, it was built in 1970. So that tells me that the system is 53 years old. So I decided I was going to fix it, even if it wasn't broken because I didn't want to deal with it in the middle of my or somebody else's vacation. I had gotten paid half of it, which turns out I actually got paid more than half because the first quotes I were getting were 25,000. So they gave me 12,500 and it ended up being 15,700. So I'll show you a couple more pictures. So this is where they first start with the excavator. They, they moved about 12 feet uphill to, to start digging this hole. And they had surveyors, uh, cameras out, they knew exactly how big this tank was, how deep it was, the slope of the of the land, both downhill and left to right. 
they had to get it completely flat. And with this excavator, I could not believe how amazingly detailed this guy was on that machine. And they measured it nonstop. That's a ruler that he's holding. They measured it nonstop to make sure that it, it would be perfectly flat. That tank that you're, you're gonna see in a second weighs 16,000 pounds of concrete. Let's see. So I ended up getting two big dirt piles and that one machine that was taking the dirt out, that's called the excavator. Then he drops that into the bucket of the skid steer and then the skid steer moves the, the dirt into these two humongous piles. So now comes the pump truck. The pump truck has to come pump out the other old system because they are going to have to crush it and they don't want that sewage to go everywhere in the ground. So they come out to pump and they had this long metal pole that they were trying to mix it up and get to the bottom. And he couldn't hit the bottom of the tank because it was a 15 foot pole and hear the feel or hear the concrete. He doesn't think there was any bottom to the tank. The other thing I should tell you is that septic installer, he ended up being a great guy. He was, and he didn't think I should even do this. He's like, if it's not broken, I wouldn't fix it. He's, he must have said that 500 times. And so he was being honest because he, you know, he could be making this money. Frustrated him the most was that being in, being on a lake, it's, it's really the Guadalupe River that's been dammed off to be multiple lakes. My soil it doesn't look so in this picture, but you saw those piles of dirt. There was not one rock in what they dug out in that humongous hole. It was the most beautiful dark brown soil you've ever seen that anyone would love to have. And he thought that was just criminal that we had to put number one, an aerobic system in versus an anaerobic system. I thought it was criminal that I had to do a drip system because if I didn't have all these restrictions of being so close to the water, it would have been the perfect soil conditions to have the cheapest, most basic conventional tank because the, the, the dirt would have taken all that fluid so easily without any problems. But because of the, where this was, I couldn't have that kind of tank. Part of what Melanie is saying is like, for example, my property, which is an hour away from this lake, but my pro property is super rocky, rock, 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 rock. And when my and on my three acre property, I literally had to dig test holes all over the property to find the area that wasn't totally rocky. They had to find the best area to put the drainage field. What Melanie is saying is that her entire property, because it's riverside, the soil is beautiful. Yeah. So that's an important point with septic. We never found any old drain field. We don't even know where it was. If there, yeah, if a little there, pipe if, going out right down in the river. Yeah, that's what, the, I mean, they joked it could have been. Anyway, you see this white pipe up here? They kept running into, they were being so careful. And those people that ran that excavator and that skid steer, they were like ballerinas. They were so precise. It was, it was unbelievable. But they kept running into these old wiring. And you'll hear in another video here shortly, wire, pipes are intentionally different colors for different things. A pipe is supposed to be gray if it has electrical in it. This pipe was white. So people used whatever the heck they had on hand at the time. So they kept running into electrical and splitting it with their machinery, not intentionally, it just happens. The whole process took three days. There were probably old electrical wires from over the 53 years. Of Here's the, the finished hole. Well, it's not all the way finished, but you see it's pretty much finished. I mean, this is like, 30 feet long. It looks here. like you're building a swimming pool, not a septic system. We had a three hour hold up when the tank was going to be delivered because there's two kinds of trucks that you can deliver this really heavy tank on. One is basically a crane truck that has a crane that lifts it up. And that's what they had put this on first, not knowing that I have 300 year old pecan trees. The crane would have destroyed all of them. So they had to move the tank in Comfort, Texas, onto a rail truck, which is what this one is. And I'm pointing out the trees there. See these risers on the top that are green? That's where you access the tank. Notice they're all the same size, the same height right now. And I was thinking like, how's that gonna work? Because I'm on a slope and these things are supposed to stick out of the ground. They fix that. My house is not that big. It's just that there's a kind of a minimum size that they use. 
And this could have handled probably a house double my size, but that's what I had to do for this type of system. And so you see it rolls on this rail and it just like hangs and teeters and then they wow. drop it. And then the guys like move it into place. These green things are gonna be covered up. They're, they're called risers. So they have about 20 of them on their trucks that are all different heights. And they switched them out once they started leveling the dirt, moving it back and forth. There's three chambers. And what an aerobic tank means is there's actually a wire that goes up to my electrical panel. There's a machine that pumps air into the septic tank and it makes bubbles. And that's why it's called an aerobic system versus an anaerobic system. And the two different types of machines use different types of bacteria to clean your sewage. So an aerobic system pumps air bubbles in nonstop, and that creates a totally different type of bacteria that cleans your system out. This is the old hole, and they were going to start to crush it. And so that you saw the excavator back there, and they were being very careful not to implode the whole thing, because guess what? The silly people that raised the house, they put this stairs that went to the air conditioning condenser and the electrical panel right on top of the septic tank. So if they imploded that, the whole stairs were gonna have to fall down. And these guys had to get up to the stairs to hook up the alarm to the electrical panel and this pump. And so it was all kind of stressful, but they were very experienced. So this is the distribution field. And this is the machine that they use. It's like a walk behind trencher and the pipes had to be 12 inches in the ground. And there's one going that direction. And then Ooh. it looks like I was planting corn. You can't run it in between trees in certain parts of the country. They actually make you pull down every tree and provide an open field. In, in Texas, they would rather you not tear down a tree than do anything else. But they kept saying these pecan trees were so massive that they would only like this because it would be giving them water. So right. you see the pipe that comes from the tank. <laughs> this is this is where you're having to see how far it has to go all the way around my patio, all the way over here. And look at all those rows. And in each row, they have this purple pipe. Purple pipe means non-potable water. They have little holes in it about every foot on the pipe. And that's where the water, once it's cleaned, it seeps out into there. And there, any of you all in Texas that do a, a house that has an aerobic system, You'll notice um, on the OSSF, which is the on-site sewer facility notice that has to be attached to all the contracts, it asks if it's an aerobic system or not. And if you check yes, you have to have a maintenance plan in the state of Texas for an aerobic system. Everything flushes in and, go, and goes from the tank out. But then once a quarter, they have to come in and back flush all of that tubing so that those holes don't get filled in with dirt and it back flushes all the way back to the tank and starts through the cleaning process all over again, and then eventually seeps back out. It, it technically should be how many people are in the house, and that's why they say bedrooms. So yeah. they assume two people per bedroom, but you know, in a place like mine that could be short-term rental and I have bunk beds, I could have up to seven people in one bedroom. So this is definitely a bigger tank than I ever needed. You see the two pipes, one's incoming and one's outgoing. It goes all the way around the patio. And then you see all, in between all these things. And then we're almost finished here. That white pipe is the water, the air going into that pipe. Sorry. That's the air shooting down into that system to see it bubbling before they got it officially connected. Um, and then here's what it looked like when they finished. They covered it all up, smoothed it all out, raked. I mean, they were so good about respecting your property and this is where they were covering up the holes it was a herculean effort for three days oh then the inspector came out and th and then they had to come out a second time after they because the inspector comes out before they fill in all these holes because they want to see that they did everything right oh the other thing i should say the very first part of this process was a civil engineer came out to my house and measured the hole in yard he was trying so hard to be able to get me a conventional tank but where my house was and the slope of the yard and the proximity to the water and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There wasn't enough room anywhere to be able to put a conventional tank in. So 
they have to draw up the plans and it has to be blessed by an engineer before the septic company can even start this process. If you Google how long should a septic system last, they usually say about 30 years and that would be like a conventional one. And okay. this one was 53 years old. So, okay. Well, these, they would do make a grease trap that came from just your kitchen sink so that if you put grease and stuff down there, it wouldn't go into your septic system. You can't disperse grease. And everybody knows now that you're not supposed to put grease into a septic system anyway. I wanna give you guys two quick tips. If you're in an older neighborhood, I would go back at the last, draw a circle around all the closed sales, search the word septic. And if it pops up that somebody else in the neighborhood has a septic, there's a real good chance you have to investigate further. If there's no septics, the other thing is if somebody has a septic, you put on your sweet, charming face, you catch them off guard, and you say, so when was the last time you had it pumped? Because if you catch them off guard, they go, oh my God, we've had problems. We pump it every year. And they give away the whole story. How much does a civil engineer cost? Probably about $2,000 of the, of the price. Of the overall price? Yeah. It was, it was an engineer that came out because that's his, he's, most civil engineers wouldn't want to come out and measure for septics all day long, I guess. So, but he's very well trained by them and he has to get his plans blessed by a civil engineer. So I had to pay the guy that came out and really designed it. And then the engineer that blessed it, I had to pay him a little bit too, but that was included in that 15,700. And as you all can see, right. given, I mean, there was a total of, there was the pumper truck and all this was included. There was electrical stuff. There were one, two, three, four, five guys, mainly from the septic system. Then there was the inspector from the county. I had to pay for that too. And then there was, I counted there were about eight people that came out. About, about five of them were there the entire time for three days. And then they had all that. And the septic company owned that equipment, that excavator and the skid steer, because I asked them, but they didn't own the the trencher because they don't usually do, they don't do a lot of aerobic systems so that they had to rent that. And for it to only cost $15,700. Negotiating a full brand new septic system was for quite a bit of acreage. And it was a $25,000 aerobic system. And that was years ago. Back in the seventies, what they did is they, they put in a tank and then that right next to it, they dug a humongous hole and filled it with rock. And it went from the tank into the hole that had the rock in it with no concrete. That's a dry well. Yep. yep. Into a lot of issues and, but joke that they had seen everything. <laughs>